evening, everybody. My name is Cameron, and welcome to Wednesday. It's the day of the week that starts with a W, in case you weren't already aware. Or if you speak other languages, this is not true, because it is not called Wednesday, I'm sure. What's going on, everybody? Domstar, what's going on? I hope you're having a wonderful night so far. Today, actually, let's not talk about today yet. Today, today is kind of coming to an end, but today's not important. I had a wonderful weekend. For those who celebrate Easter out there, I hope it was a wonderful one. Uh, I was not visited by any, well, I guess, okay, I was visited by an Easter bunny per se. There was a bunny, so to speak, who put candy in a basket for me. It was probably my mother or my father or a combination of both. And I also put a beautiful display of candy and whatnot on my desk for me for when I return home. I actually went up north to Vermont where one of my brothers lives and I had a really, really fun time hanging with my family. It was probably I, I won't speak too much into it however it was probably one of the most wonder like wonderfully bonding experiences i've had in my life thus far it was very nice to be able to like just kind of sit around and talk openly and candidly with my younger brothers and whatnot we're all going through different changes in our lives right now i just finished college a little bit ago started my first real boy job uh my brother did the, the very same thing he's up there doing his big uh, his first job and looking at uh doing other things and whatnot with his music and whatnot uh, and my youngest brother's about to graduate high school and he's about to go off to college. It's a crazy time for all of us. And uh, it was really, it, I think we're all kind of, we're all kind of stressed in our own ways. So it was really nice to just, just to like talk to everybody about it. And it was really great. And uh, before I go any further, I love my family. I love my brothers and I love my mom and my dad. And I'm so glad that everybody, you know, I'm so glad that they're all still here to be able to celebrate the holidays together. Dom's like, do you make a pile of ketchup or spread the ketchup over the fries and then eat them? Oh my goodness. So in my younger years, I would do a pile of ketchup and dip them individually. However, as I've gotten older, I've become a little less in that world. So what I do is I put it all over the place to force myself to not have as much ketchup because this is what I do. The logic is I don't want to have as much sugar. I don't want to have as much ketchup. So what I'll do is instead of putting the big glob right, like, right there that I'm inclined to dip all the fries until I'm either out of fries or out of ketchup to refill back up again, I do just one drizzle and then that's all the ketchup I get. And then I get to enjoy the fries for the rest of them there. Wholesome content. Indeed, indeed. So I actually, going into the cocktail, cocktail sessions of things today, I really have no plans. I got back from the weekend. I was really, really tired. I had to finish up all the rest of the stuff that I had on the chopping block. I was trying to do all of my work and whatnot in the car, but I get a, I, I'm get getting more nauseous in my elder years. I'm, I'm 24 now. I'm getting old. My, my back's getting a little sore, and my voice ain't what it used to be, and my brain's forgetting things all the time. Um, and also my surface is a very small computer. It's it's this thing. I wish I'd, I'd shove this thing off before. This is my surface. It's a surface go. It's It's shit. Please don't buy a surface go. I would not recommend it if you're a computer file kind of like I am That's a terrible computer. Don't do it. It's an even worse tablet But it works and I couldn't do all my work on it So I just go until I got home and then I binge the whole thing. It was great But we got everything done and I didn't have to worry about it so much. But I, because of that, I was kind of tired. It's still kind of getting back. I'm not jet lagged or anything like that. I was still in the same time zone, but I was just like, oh, my apartment's kind of a mess. I got things all over the place. I don't know what I'm gonna do. So I really don't know what I'm gonna do. So instead what I'll do is I'm just gonna kind of start things off the way that I would normally do, except we're gonna bring it back by like an hour. Usually I have these things planned out ahead of time. Sometimes I don't, sometimes a couple days in advance, sometimes not. And this is essentially my process. I will now introduce every single cocktail book that I own. Um, and I might be missing a couple of them because there are a lot of them. And honestly, there, it's very possible that some of them are just missing or in the improper places. So I'm taking all my things out. The other day, I've been becoming a little more familiar with social media culture, trying to become less of an online introvert. So uh, I decided to share my passions online, make a couple of posts on social media and whatever, talk in different communities and whatnot. Technically this one isn't a cocktail book, I put it on there anyway, it's a tea book. And so I was I was thinking about what I am, what my hobbies are, what is it that I do? I also have a couple of magazines, but I'm not bringing those out because they're very, very small. You get to see the whole process. Oh, absolutely indeed. It's not a very involved process. I'll give it that much, but this is at least a piece of it. But so I was like, I'm trying to describe like what my hobbies are or what I would call myself. And to be perfectly honest, I wouldn't say that I'm a bartender. I've never worked as a bartender. I've never been paid for the job. Um, I wouldn't consider myself, I guess I'd consider myself a mixologist, but like, I guess that's a little like vague term out there. I have come down to the conclusion that I am a live streaming cocktail enthusiast because I like it and I 
think I, I'm not much pro in there, but I think feel like I know a thing or two, and I want to explore. If there's a Star Wars, is there a Star Wars theme drink? Hold on, I have a book for that, and coincidentally, it's literally right up on top. Let's see if you can, you can go over here, ma'am. I'd appreciate that. So here's my process. If I'm trying to figure out what kind of drink I'm gonna do, I'm gonna look in one of my different books. I pretty much know all of them, although I forget most of them exist because I'm an absolute mess of a person. Um, but if I were to try to look for something Star Warsy, video gamesy, I'd probably go to this book that I have. It's called The Geeky Bartender. And actually, oddly enough, <laughs> I actually found out about this book because of you, Dom, because I think you shared like a TikTok or something and it showcased the first edition of this book. And as it turned out, <laughs> I was able to find it while I was on vacation one time, it was great. Let me look at the back of this book. It's probably got a, it, I, I hope it lists by um, game, perhaps, maybe, I don't know. I'm gonna look for star, star, star in the back of the book. I see Star Trek and I see Star Wars. There are three drinks in here that are labeled Star Wars. 70, 72, and 138. 70, 72, as I'm flipping through that, 138, what do we got? Technically, aren't I a chemist? Technically, because everything we do is chemistry. You don't even have to be a chemist to be a chemist. You can literally eat food and your body is doing the chemistry for you. So technically speaking, we're all chemists. Oh, let's see. So there's three drinks in here that are inspired by Star Wars. One is Ardee's, AKA Jawa Juice. This is, this is Jawa Juice. That contains rye whiskey, which I have, spiced maple syrup, which I don't have, unfortunately. Fresh lemon juice, which I have access to. Pichelle's bitters, ice cubes, and chilled bacon ale. So actually, oddly enough, so usually it goes something like this. I will go down my list, either flipping through my books or looking through a particular category, and I will try to find what ingredients I already have or if I have any substitutions for it. This one here is calling for spiced maple syrup. I have maple syrup, but if they're calling for something spiced, that'd be something that I get to like invest my own like schwa into. I could just put like cinnamon in there, I could put clove in there, I could put any types of spices I want to. Hell, I could even put basil in there and call it spiced if I wanted to, but I don't have any of that prepared. It also says chilled bacon ale, which I don't know where they got this from. And there's a whole description that goes along with all of these, but it would take me so much time to read the description for all of them. But I actually know where to get bacon ale. Or I actually, hold on. When they say ale, I don't know whether they mean beer or like root beer or like something ale. Like I know where to get bacon soda. And that would be what I stand in for something like that, but I don't currently have any. Oh, because of you? Yeah, it is. I don't know I don't know when it was, but yes, you were the one who shared the TikTok that allowed me to find this book. And it was crazy. Let me set the scene for you as I uh, flip to the other Star Wars book, uh, as, uh, Star Wars cocktail. And so basically I'm walking through the store and I'm chatting with my cousin who calls me like literally out of the, out of the blue um, where she's talking to me about relationship stuff or whatever. And so I tell my buddies about this. Uh, I tell uh, my buddy Glenn, and his older sister about this cocktail book that I'm looking for. And we walk into the store, I don't even remember what, it call, what it's called, and I'm on the phone and I'm looking down, they're like, hey, Cam, isn't that the cocktail book you were just talking about? And I look up and literally right in front of me is this book. And I love the art of this thing. Do you love the, do, do I have it? No, don't have the ale, unfortunately. Although, so this is the, the next part of the process, the part that goes going forward is I will look through these books and I will find something that I've never seen before. For example, chilled bacon ale. I did not realize that that was a thing, did not realize that there was a drink that, drink that calls for it. So what's gonna happen is like this, because I know my brain very well. I'm gonna forget this ever existed. I'm gonna forget that chilled bacon ale was a thing. I'm gonna forget this drink existed. However, somewhere along the line, something is going to remind me about bacon. And then something along the line is gonna remind me about seltzer or soda. I'm gonna be like, bacon ale. Why do I think that I've heard of that before? And then eventually I'll hear it enough times in my own head that I'll be like, where the hell did I hear bacon ale from? I heard it from this book. And then hopefully the right circumstances of events occur and I am in a place where I can purchase bacon ale. And then we'll be like, oh my God, I can keep that for when I can make that drink again. Although I don't exactly know how long bacon ale would keep. If it's a soda, I guess until I opened it. If it's an ale, it might be, might be sour by the time I get to it. I don't really know though. But so eventually, I, there might be a year from now before I remember this thing exists or if somebody pesters me enough then uh, we'll do it. We gotta hold me accountable. I, I get forgetful sometimes. So if this is something that everybody really wants to see, I will find it. I will track it down. And we will have it. But the other Star Wars drinks in this cocktail book, uh, one is called the Tatooine Sunset. Let me show this up there. This, the, these cocktails are beautiful looking. One of the things that I currently am not good at is taking pictures of the cocktails I have. I started an Instagram account just so I can take a look back and see like what these things look like. And I'm getting better getting better with my video editing skills, my lighting skills and stuff. Um, it's it's gonna take some time, but I'm trying my best. Tatooine Sunset calls for silver tequila. We got that. Blue Curacao, we got that. Pomegranate liqueur specifically. I 
don't have pomegranate liqueur. I would say that would probably be good switched out with like a cherry liqueur, but I don't have a sweet cherry liqueur. I have a cherry eau de vie, which doesn't really taste like cherry. The closest thing I have is like a raspberry, but it's like a sour raspberry. So that's not really the pomegranate thing that I would look for. Or I use grenadine, but that's that's something differently entirely. It also uses grenadine, which I just said I had, because I do have used it last week. Fresh lemon juice, got that. Orange juice, yeah, cherries and whatnot. So technically the only thing I don't have there is pomegranate juice, but it's got that really cool gradient effect to it. I love that. Oh, ale can be pretty expensive. It can be. If you know exact, if you know where to look, if you know where to look, you can find good ale, and if you know where to look, you can find expensive ale. And I would think if the ale is expensive, it would also mean that it's good. But those categories are not necessarily overlapping all the time. There's some shady business practices out there. The other, ooh, the other Star Wars drink in this book. If I go down the list, one thirty-eight. One thirty-eight calls for episode whatever uh, a new hope i don't remember which episode that is i am uh, not a huge star wars guy but that's because i've watched the full series a couple times and my brain just doesn't absorb that kind of stuff but i like it i like sci-fi stuff inspired by star wars oh it's blue milk they have a recipe for making blue milk in here awesome i've had some of the blue milk in disney world they have a star wars area over there it's great oh i think it was a zelda healing potion tiktok that you sent me and had the book reference yep They've got a couple potions in there. They've got second potion, red potion, blue potion, green potion. Actually, this book doesn't have second potion. A YouTube series I watched had uh, second potion, where it actually changes color. That shit's chemistry. Dude, there's, there's a book out there that I want called Cocktail Chemistry, and I don't remember the dude who makes it, but he is a... Oh my god, there's a word for what he does. Gastronom molecular gastronomist. That's what they call it. He calls himself a molecular gastronomist who uses science to be able to create awesome drinks. And I learned a couple, I, I need to get the book, it's called Liquid Intelligence, I'm pretty sure. And I don't remember who, who makes it, but it might've been, mm, I'm not even gonna try there. Yeah, Screwball is a cheaper whiskey and tastes that feels amazing. That's the peanut butter whiskey. I think I have a little nip of that somewhere up there. Although I don't know if it's Screwball, but I'd have to check. There's a possibility. The blue milk looks so good and it contains goat's milk. You can use other milk. I have other milk. Two tablespoons of avocado. I do have avocados, blueberry syrup. Don't have blueberry syrup. I don't have anything that tastes like blueberry. I was actually, I was literally thinking about the other day. I was looking through another one of my cocktail books. I think it was this one, this little one that's the spiral, no, the spirals here. And it called for a blueberry liqueur or a blueberry schnapps, I think it was. I was like, I've never heard of blueberries in a drink. And lo and behold, I think I literally just saw on the internet today, I want to say it's r slash bartenders or r slash cocktails is doing a cocktail competition where they're like, give us your give you, give us your flair, an original recipe that uses blueberries in some way, shape, or form. I'm like, God, I wish I had a blueberry liqueur. I have blueberries. I can pick them up at the store. There's nothing stopping me. I'm not a big competition guy, so I don't really enter into those things. If it happens, it happens, but alas. And uh, yeah, and then I use blue, uh, whoa, food, words. Blue food coloring to make it look blue, naturally. The blueberries aren't going to do the trick there. And then you also use vanilla ice cream. And I guess you whip the whole thing up, right? Yeah, you use the force, as they say in the book, to blend all the ingredients together or a blender. Pour it into a vessel of your choice. Consumption, I have water with me because the cocktail has not been decided on yet. How are you doing, Jake? How are you? Oh, but I love I love this book. There's also, dude, there's there's Zelda things in here. Any Anytime that there is a game mentioned, I checked this book first because this is the one that I have, and it's great. Hi, a child. Child, I'll have you know that I will be a child forever. So you're absolutely right on that statement. So, Geeky Cocktail Book. That's out there. That's a cool one. What else do we have here? There are some... I picked up a book. Actually, where is that one? I picked up a book the other day, and it's... As I read the summary of the book, it's down here. I don't want to knock anything over, although I'm definitely going to. Here we go. Here we go. We're trying. We're trying. Oh! Nice. That was... That worked out a lot better than I thought it was going to work out. Okay, this was a, this was a book that I picked up at the thrift store. And it's called The Cocktail Chronicles with recipes by Cynthia Lee Katona. Katona. And so, as I read the summary of this book, it was uh, the author was describing it as like an autobiography through the world of cocktails. So it's not like it's like a chronological cocktail book, so to speak. And what really piqued my interest about this was the fact that it talks about cocktails from all over the world, which means that it talks about cocktails with spirits that are all over the that are from different parts of the world some spirits that i've literally never heard of some spirits that i have heard of before there's another cocktail book that i have 
That's this one down here, Around the World in 80 Cocktails, which also does the same thing. I'm not an expert in any of these books. I haven't read through all of them. I hope to never read through all of them because if I ever did, then I'd run out of recipes. And I mean, I guess there's the internet, but you know, who's really counting that? Is there any Halo drinks in it? Oh, for sure. There's definitely at least one Halo drink. I want to say... Ooh, let me see. Let's go to the back here. I love it when the I love it when the cocktail books actually have things in the back that I can index by, like ingredient and stuff like that. H for Halo. H for Halo. We gotta. Do we not have Halo? No way. All right. There is no Halo cocktail in here, unfortunately. That's unfortunate. Consumption. That was poured right into my mouth. It annoys me that your remote controls are not straight on the wall. Well, I mean, that's okay. The, the, there via Velcro. How does that look now? Is that okay? Well, because of the angle. Let's see. Let's see. That's because we use them often. You know what? I'm gonna fix your problem in my own way. Ta-da! Chaotic. I want to see actually what if there is any cocktail in this book that I can make right now. There's a lot of different spirits and stuff in it. I'm just gonna flip through it and see what we can find. Uh, oh, this is a format that I'm not, okay. I have one, oh, I know what the mudslide is. Vodka, Kahlua, Irish cream, milk or cream, ice and chocolate syrup. I don't have any chocolate syrup, unfortunately. Hmm. Let's go back a bit. Usually this is what I do. I just kind of sit there and if I'm doing something else, I'll go through the ingredients and see if I got them. And if not, cool. This one calls for Light German wheat beer. I don't have any beer on me, unfortunately. I'm not a big beer drinker. I don't usually keep these things around. Uh, unless I'm preparing for an event. If I'm preparing for an event, I'll usually pick up beer. I like IPAs. I don't think I have any... I don't think I have any beer in the fridge right now. I've got sake and stuff like that. I actually just... While I was up in Vermont, they're big on maple syrup. I picked up mead. <laughs> this thing looks good. I haven't tried it yet. It looks very, very good. It says, judged by Golden Rule Brewing in Middlebury, Vermont. It's great. Sounds good. I love the idea of the mudslide or different beers and stuff. Ooh, excuse me. A mimosa calls for a bottle of sparkling wine. Actually, Anna and I went to a bridal show a couple weekends ago and won a basket, and in it was a $50 bottle of wine, which I was like, hell yeah! It was like champagne. That's pretty good. I don't know when I'm gonna crack that open. Anna's not a big wine drinker. I'm not a big wine drinker. However, I could use it for cocktail, but then how the hell am I gonna seal the thing back up? It's bubbly as fuck! Uh, Tennessee whiskey barbecue sauce is not a drink. I would put that on wings. <laughs> I'm winging it. Do you want to try some mead? I actually have a couple different types of mead. I have this mead. No idea what it tastes like. I took a recipe of... Oh, you know what? Hold up a second. I took a, I took a picture of the recipe that was on the wall when I bought it. Inspiration. But I have a couple different types of mead. That one is made, I think, mostly from like honey and maple syrup. I have one that's avocado mead. It's weird and i also have cherry blo uh orange blossom mead orange blossom mead does not taste like orange orange blossom does not taste like orange not in the way that you think it does it's, just, it's not really my cup of tea but i think i still have some more of it the recipe that i found when i bought this mead was scrolling through my phone history where is it where are you where are you at the bottom of the list i have a bunch of pictures in here of my family sorry not sorry the golden rum mead has fancy a cocktail eight ounces of twig that's that's the name of the mead i think they call it twig dark rum to taste and ice cubes so you just mix twig with dark rum and that's what you get that's what you get could could pour it into a gallon jug the wine i could but then how am i going to seal it because if it loses all of its bubbles it's not going to it's not going to be the same wine it was before although yeah you know what it's a simple thing but honestly, I don't do simple things very often. Hey, you know what? If we do a couple of simple things, we might be able to squeeze two cocktails out of this evening. We'll see about that. I, I literally just need rum. I, I just need rum. I just need to go get my rum. Uh, I'll leave my books here for a hot second. I'll be back in a moment while I go get some rum. I'll put it on the shelves in the other way. Yeah, actually, I don't think I've ever, I'm trying to think of it. I don't think I've shown my cocktail collection off like at all, or my, my, um, my liquor co collection. Let's, uh, I was meaning to try this today, so I am going to try this. Excuse me while I adjust my camera angle to showcase the other side of my apartment where... Hi there, that's my face. Hi there. <laughs> Hi there, everybody. Hi there, it's me. I'm Cameron. This is another angle of my apartment. I'm going to go grab some dark rum. I keep it over there. And I actually, like, it would be better if I turn the lights on once, wouldn't it? Boop. 
Hey there, it's really bright in the neighborhood. By the way, if anything happens, I literally can't tell until I get back, so hold on. I'll be back in a second. I'm gonna go. I need my step stool to grab my rum. I'm just gonna talk about my liquor collection and hope that somebody's listening out there, and if you're responding, I will read it in a bit. I keep all of my fancy uh, fruit stuff in that corner, a varying degree. I keep my, uh, my order is, I'll do my, whoops, that's not, that's not straight. Do that again. Who really is? Why aren't you straight? Thank you for being straight for me. I keep all of my vodkas in that corner as well as the Everclear. I also keep the coffee and nut liqueurs over there as well. Then comes the fruit and then more nut liqueur. I think I have those things mixed up. Then I have things that are spicy and whatnot going into the whiskey, then to the other liqueurs we have amaros and different botanical spirits going into the gin and then tequila mezcal rum of varying types and if i'm going for just a dark i'm probably gonna go for myers because honestly i think that's a good choice that's a quality choice when it comes to rum let me go put, fix my lighting back up Oop. and i'm about to get real weird on the camera for a second here just kidding just kidding come back over here and i will move this around here we go i'm gonna try to fix this I hope everything remains straight. Hi there. It's me and my face. Hi, everybody. I'm back. I went for one bottle. What was going on? What did I miss? Don't think you've ever shown the kitchen, to be honest. It's really not that much to see, to be perfectly honest there. Uh, I've never seen the angle. This would be an interesting angle to have your video be. That's just impressive. Thank you. I have a lot of liquor bottles. I'm not an alcoholic, I promise. Not by any clinical standard, at least. I'm gonna put these on my, on the floor. Here we go. Okay, I just, <laughs> I just dropped a bunch of books on my foot and I'm still in pain, but it's okay. We have alcohol and we have mead. And we also require ice and is this shaken? Stir gently and enjoy. This is a stirred drink. I'm gonna get out my stirring thing. I am dropping shit all over the place today. I just need my mixing glass. I don't need my shake a shake for this. I do need my measuring jigger. Put that over here, finagle things around. We're great. Consumption, I am curious to see what the mead tastes like on its own. So, oh, it had a little bit of carbonation. All right, this literally smells like beer. It smells like beer. This smells like a sour. This smells like a sour ale. I don't know if that's a good thing or not. It's a little bit of sour ale and a little bit of, and this is gonna sound weird, but it's in a good way. I mean it in a good way. It's a little bit of sour ale and it's a little bit of cat urine. Or just urine in general. After it's had a chance to dry. Anyway. Cheers. Twig. This is Twig. This is golden rum mead. They call it Twig. Native maple mead with tea and bubbles. I'm guessing the tea is kombucha. I found that kombucha to me smells like cat pee. Yeah. Alright. Yeah, that tastes like... That tastes like a sour beer with a hint of maple. It's not bad. It's not bad. It doesn't it doesn't taste like cat pee. It has the air of cat pee, if I had to be specific there. You ain't even drink you ain't even drunk and dropped and shit literally all over my feet. I am a very a very accident prone. Oh, something just interesting happened in my mouth. Let me tell you all about it. It's from that mead. As it <laughs> sounds so weird the way that I said that. It tastes different now. As it lays on my tongue, I'm getting a lot more of that maple syrupy vibe, and it's a little menthol. It's almost a little minty. I don't know how to describe it. I know there are other things out there that are minty, kind of like how other things out there are like cinnamony, like basil is cinnamony to me. There's something out there. I don't know what it is, but I'm tasting it right now and it's mint -y. It's got that menthol-y taste to it, but it's nice. And then it's kind of, I see what they call it, twig. It's twiggy. It's almost like, it's almost like I, I breathed on a stick and then like, it's kind of like I just put a stick in my mouth. I didn't bite down, but it's just kind of sitting there. And I'm like, this is sticky in a twiggy kind of way. But so, the twig cocktail, I don't know what it's called. Red it dry, natural gluten free. Calls for eight ounces of twig and then dark rum to taste. That's a lot of twig, to be honest. That is a lot of twig. Uh, and we put one to two ice cubes, stir gently and enjoy. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna stir. I don't think it needs to be in a stirring glass and then poured out. I think what they mean is to put it in a glass with ice cubes and then stir to enjoy. Uh, we'll see how much that we get out of this. Uh, let's see. I'll get, I guess I'll get, I'll get one ice cube for my steerage, and then I'll get one ice cube for my glass. So, barrel taste, convenient, very barely tasting. Oh, I don't know what barrels. It's twig blends, white and roasted teas with equal parts Vermont orange and honey and maple syrup, toffee and caramel notes, balance of pang of starfruit. All right, I read starfruit, and I agree with that. 
Serve chilled, uh, expect crisp bubbles. Warmer temperatures reveal more of the deep toasty notes. I would say that is rather toasty. Spherical ice cubes? Oh, you know, you bring up a great point. Let's use spherical ice cubes. I have spherical ice cubes. Let's put it in one of my glasses. I'm gonna try to see if I can put it in one of the newer ones. I need to see, I gotta go over here to see which glasses are prepped for the occasion. Uh, let's do, let's do a rocks glass. Let's do a rocks glass. I don't know, this is, this is kind of like a, like a whiskey shot glass. Oh, uh, do the, oh, let me see if the, the spheres will even fit in here. I think they will. This set might actually be pretty cool. This could be cool. Let's see. I have like, they're like mildly spherical. They're not the best spheres in the world, but they get the job done. They're kind of, how's that? Spherical? Spherical enough for that round for you? Round enough for you? I'm trying to, I want to see if I can crack off some of the, um, the not so parts of it. The not so spherical parts. Actually, that is working incredibly well. I did not expect that to work as well as it just, as it just did. All it took is a little post-processing. Patience, Cameron. Patience. All right. Spherical. Here we go. Oh, that looks beautiful. Love the way that looks. That's great. I like that. Guess it's today. Today is the day. Uh, it costs for like eight ounces of thing. This thing, I do not think this is even going to fit eight ounces of anything in it. But I'm going to mix it up. And we'll see what happens. It says dark rum to taste. So I don't think I need that much twig in it. So I'm just going to... I'll do like... Oh, four ounces. I'll have I'll have it because this is a lot. This is um that would be a lot of ounces. Let's see how much two ounces will get for me, and see if I need any more. Let's do two ounces of our twig mead. That's a lot of ounces. Oh, I think this entire bottle is eight ounces. Maybe. Let's see how many ounces is this. Oh, it's eight ounces. Mix the whole bottle with dark rum. Okay. I'm not using my entire bottle of dark rum just for something I'm experimenting with. That. I'd have to go all the way back up to Vermont. I have to ask my brother to ship it to me, which I don't know if you can do with alcohol. Spherical ice cubes are used quite a lot with whiskey in the UK. Particularly, particularly spherical, by the way. This is good. I'm very glad. I got this. I, I bought this off of Amazon. It was really cheap, and I thought that I was going to do cheap job. And for a while, I'll be honest, I haven't used it very much because I was honestly like, uh, well, I, if it's not going to be perfectly spherical, I don't want to use it. But it was actually as spherical as I needed it to be. So literally all I'm doing is I'm taking the mead, I'm stirring it up, and I'm gonna add like a dash or two of dark rum. If they call for eight ounces, if they call for me to do the whole entire thing and like some quantity of dark rum, I'm just gonna do a splash, maybe two. Two splashes of rum and a little bit spilled on the table. That's no big deal. Let me just, I can clear that up. Let me clear that up a bit. I actually, the way that, the thing that I'm smelling right now, the notes that I'm getting from the dark rum actually smells great when it comes with the mead, when it combines together. It's, it's very pleasant smelling. Now it just kind of smells like rum. I don't know what I was talking about. I drowned it out. I did. I drowned it all out. What do I do? And I'm just going to strain it so I don't get that big ice cube into my little thing here. And uh, I'm not going to bother going for the yoga blocks to the full disclosure. I lost one of them. Let's see how that looks. Did I do just enough? Oh. Oh. It's a little much. It is a little much. There's still a bit left in there. That's good. You cannot ship alcohol using the postal service. Damn. You know, there's a YouTuber I watch that says you can buy your alcohol via curiata.com. Nobody's sponsoring this video, but they say that they can ship anywhere. They can't. They lied. They will not ship to my house. I'm very bothered by that. But that spherical ice cube is perfect in that glass, honestly. And you know what? This was only possible because of the thrift store. This glass I only just got two weekends ago when I bought a bunch of glasses. And actually, you know, I turned my camera that angle. But if I turn my camera that way, you'll see that I have all of my glasses just stacked on a table haphazardly in the corner. It's extremely dangerous. And as soon as an earthquake hits, that's it. They're all going away. And then I'll go back to the thrift store and buy even more of them. But so, let's try what this is. It's literally mead, specifically honey mead from Vermont, combined with dark rum, because that's what they told me to do. It's mixed, the type of mead is called twig. So I'm gonna call it the twig cocktail because it's a cocktail recommended by the makers of twig. Thank you, Vermont. I appreciate that. It smells like rum. different okay so you know how i was saying before 
that there was something barky about it, like almost twig-like, like actually like I'm biting into wood or I'm breathing in the wood, I still taste that. That hasn't gone away. The sourness also hasn't gone away either. This idea of the sour of the rum with everything else going on, actually kind of cool. Consumption. Oh, I most definitely will. That's nice. That's really enjoyable. Oh my goodness. Oh, until you realize all the glasses at the thrift store are broken too. Uh, some of them did have cracks in them. I think one of them I put there myself, unfortunately. Let's see it. Can an earthquake happen where I live? One has not happened yet. And I will show it now that we're asking about it. I absolutely will. This is, this is really lovely. So I have a better analogy for what I was saying before about it's almost mint-like. Let's just say it tastes like the air of the cool Vermont weather. And by that, I mean, it's kind of cold, it's kind of piney, and it's also a little bit like weed. I've been told that there are a lot of hippies up in Vermont. I know at least one of them. And so that's what I, I like about that. It's very, it's very, it's very plain. But it combines the essence of the mead with everything the rum could desire. Supposedly they say it has like notes of caramel and toastiness to it. That's not really coming across for me. But there were caramel molasses notes in the rum that are now tasting a little bit different because of whatever interplay is happening. There is a lot going on here and I can't quite describe all of it. But it's very, very good. And I really like it. Yes, there could very well be earthquakes. Maybe they burn wood while they brew it. It's very possible. I could say... Now that I think about like the wood, it's very possible that it's almost it's got like a like a burnt wood aesthetic to it. Like it very well could taste kind of like burnt wood. I get the idea of it kind of tastes very like as if the wood itself is not in the it's not the way that it used to be. Excuse me while I take my obligatory pictures so I can look back on these a year from now and be like, hey, I was drinking in my 20s. Because that's why I take pictures. Not for any other purpose. Consumption, I will. I will. Because it's very nice. This is total. this is great. Also, I usually don't do any sort of ratings of like shot ability or chug ability because I'm not really attempting to encourage any sort of binge drinking and whatnot. However, I had my younger, crazier years and still will have more ahead of me. And this is totally downable. Like if you want to get a little, I, I don't actually, I don't think it would fuck you up. Where is it? How alcoholic is this? This is... 8.5 ABV. All right, that's like, it's like nothing. It's like a beer. It's like a beer. That's really, that's really all it'd be. Well, let me check off all these consumptions. Ooh, because I think I fulfilled every single one of them. That was good. So actually, I'm going to put this to the side. I'm going to bring the books back up on the table. I have no idea how I'm going to compartmentalize this stream now. We've done, we're doing two cocktails. Oh, God. Any idea what the second will be? I'm winging it. I'm winging it. Honestly, I did not expect to use the mead today, but I'm actually really happy that I did. Let's take, I don't know, let's take some more of these books and, oh, let me, let me wash off my, let me clean off my bar. Hot second. Wouldn't be a proper bar unless there was a bartender tending to the bar. And I may have made a mess. I was actually cleaning up the mess from my stream last week, right before we started. Because I'm a responsible adult. Consumption! Actually, I'm gonna do water this time. It's healthy to do so. Two cocktails, that's right folks, you got it, right here. The cocktail hour is including, you guessed it, not one, no, no, not three, no, no, no. Two, two cocktails. Merely because this one was way too easy. Let's go back through the books and see. I already looked at that one, I already looked at that one. Um, oh my God. I just wanna bring this book up. Because I also found this at the thrift store and I was, I was caught by the spine, and the spine says, although the light's not really helping me out here, the spine says the title of the book. The title of the book is Pregatinis. And so I thought to myself, oh my god, am I picking up a book for pregnant women to drink? Yes, although none of these drinks are alcoholic. It's a mixology book for the mom-to-be. I'm sure there's a mom-to-be in all of us by Natalie Bovis, The Liquid Muse. And it's, it's, a, bunch of, um, it's a bunch of mocktails and whatnot. Excuse me. There are also a couple of dad-to-be cocktails in here as well. I usually don't have mocktail ingredients because I don't have all um, I don't have all the mixers and whatnot. But you never know. Third time is the charm. But about a month or two ago, I made like four shots, and it was a great Wednesday that night. It was a three shots. We, they, they were all trying to be layered too, although some of them didn't work out. Actually, they all kind of worked out. 
the thumbnail had a little bit of work on it to make things look like they were really layered, but it was kind of cool because it's three layered shots, but three three layered shots, it's... Nobody appreciated it except for the creator, which is me, which means it was exactly what it needed to be. So Pregatini's is a book completely embellished with a bunch of different photos of, like, things that you'd expect a baby to have, like teddy bears and rattles and whatnots. Oh my goodness. And it's, like, kind of sarcastically written and been like, you know, you're going to be a mom. That means you're going to go through one of the most stressful times of your life. You're bringing another life into this world. Can you imagine the financial support that you're going to have to go through right now? And God, I hope dad's still around or your partner or else, oh, mama, literally. Um, and so it's kind of like that. And it's split into different parts. The list, the part one, which is something, which is, is there a part list? Prelude to a Pregatini. This woman is very clearly not pregnant. This is how is it? Prelude to a Pregatini. It's a, I mean, maybe she's in the very, very early stages of pregnancy. Oh dear. Thanks to the glamorization of pregnancy by today's celebrities, the baby bump has become a declaration of a sexy femininity. And yes, a fashion statement. I am going to walk around with a baby bump now to prove that I am the sexiest pregnant man on the street. Maybe. Make a pregatini with alcohol. Didn't I look, use that book last week? No, nah, not this one. What did I do last week? Oh, you know what book I used last week? I remember the big ass one, which is actually the only book that I don't have over here because I was using for reference and it's over at my desk. That was a big ass book that I found on the side of the room one time. Let's see, what kind of things are going through here? I am gonna find, all right, the, the first one that I went to is uh, the Queen of Hearts. Uh, next to that, that doesn't seem actually interesting. The one next to that is Trump This, and it's a drink using Trump Vodka, which I did not realize was a brand of vodka. It also uses tamarind nectar, which I don't have. So I'm just gonna keep on moving on to another page in the book. I, I'd be surprised if I had all the things for it and it wasn't just stupidly simple. We got, we got, we got, we got the th There's a section all for the third trimester. I don't know exactly when that is, but it's definitely after the second trimester and before if there is a fourth. Make a <laughs> don't be like the doof and have both my parents not show up for my birth. You dummy. It'd be funny because I feel like you could be born through like a surrogate mother, in which case your biological parents technically could not show up to your birth. That's a we're, we're living in an interesting time right now. Sweet and Sassy is a drink. Every single one of these are served in martini glasses. Oh, one of them was in a tall glass. Martini glass. Tall glass. Champagne flute. I got some of those. The Sweet and Sassy calls for powdered sugar. Got that. Cranberry juice. I don't know if I have any more cranberry juice. Let me do some raspberry syrup. Well, I definitely don't have raspberry syrup, and I don't plan on taking the next hour to make it. So, we've not heard of the Biden Amaretto then? I haven't heard of the Biden Amaretto. Does it use Biden brand vodka or Biden brand burn my brains? I don't know. Sparkling Jasmine Blossom uses organic white jasmine tea, which I do not have at this bar. Um, pear nectar. I don't have any pear nectar. Uh, oh, what is this? Section 7. Section 7. Breastfeeding and beyond. Reinstate. I don't know what the reinstate here is supposed to mean. Um, the liquid new champagne, whiskey barrel bitters. Oh, that's got alcohol in it though. Bitters have alcohol. What is up with the world on thinking bitters don't have alcohol? You can buy it in a supermarket and you can apparently ship it when you're underage. It's got alcohol. It's got like 40% alcohol in it. The world is just like, well, it's still kind of a medication. Like, no, it's not. <laughs> Why is up? Third is like 15 weeks forward or something like that. Oh, okay. Anna's taken like a, a a young, like early development class. And so I'm inclined to think that she would know the answers to that, but she's off studying right now. She's off in the green pastures of the, uh, the academic space. Uh, hot mama, jalapeno. I may have that. Lime juice, grapefruit bitters. I do actually have grapefruit bitters. Orange juice and diet ginger ale, but I don't have, oh, wait, 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 wait. Anna, I think did some house cleaning the other day. Do we still have ginger ale? Oh my god, I don't know if we still have ginger ale. Okay, hold up. If, if, if we have ginger ale, and if I can find the jalapenos, which I think, I want to say the jalapenos went bad. Let me, I can check this. I'm going to check and see if we have jalapenos and ginger ale, we can do this one. And that's what we'll do. Oh, or Kamala Kraken. Rum. Oh, I like Kraken. Kraken, uh, I've had some good times with Kraken. Let me take this with me. See if I have jalapenos. See if I have ginger ale, first of all. Ginger ale? Ginger! Ginger ale, do we have that? I... Uh... What is this? Oh! Ginger ale! We have ginger ale in the corner of the room! I keep some of my sodas over there. Do we have jalapenos, though? Do we have anything that is spicy? Do I got the jalapenos yet? I 
don't have any more jalapenos. Jalapenos, where are you? Why have not you like pepper, like pepper in place of it? Oh no, when I'm out eating jalapenos. That is super unfortunate. I thought I had some recently, but you know, it must have gone bad because I couldn't find a use for them. Oh. I found ginger ale, so I have ginger ale. I'm gonna bring over the ginger ale. Hi everybody, I'm back with the ginger ale. I found ginger ale, but there was no jalapenos. Very unfortunate. Hmm. I suppose we could use, no, but if they're going for a Okay, what are they using it? Muddle a jalapeno slice, lime juice, and bitters in the bottom of the mixing glass. Add orange juice and ice, then shake. Strain into a martini glass, top with ginger ale. Garnish with the remaining jalapeno slices floating on the surface of the drink. Hypothetically speaking, hypothetically, you know, I don't have to use jalapenos. I could use any other chili pepper. I don't have any chili peppers. However, I do have chili flakes. I can go get chili flakes, and I could use my Ancho Reyes chili liqueur. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna do that instead. And so while I do that, uh, let's see. I promised I'd show off my glass collection. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go this way. I'm gonna turn. This is gonna be a very awkward angle because I had way too much shit in the way. Hi there, that's my microphone. That's my television. That's a poster on the wall. And you'll probably catch a bit of my light stand. There we go. They're my, those are all of my glasses. At least the ones that are on top, I have more. Let me, yes. While I go get the other spicy ingredients, take a look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Wow, it's so great. If I lost my non-dominant leg and were given a peg leg that you could fill with a particular drink of your choice, what would I fill it with? Dom would do cider. I gotta think about that for a moment. Let me think about what I would put in my peck leg. I really, really, really like Negronis. So I think I would put a Negroni in my peg leg. Although, like, I have the choice of what that Negroni is made out of because the Negroni itself is more like a formula, more so than a specific recipe when you really boil things down. So I would go with that because it's basically a formula and I've tricked the system and hey -o, got him. Anyway, I have my ingredients. That's my, that's my glass collection, or at least some of them. There's actually more. There's about double the number of glasses that you see there. Um, however, those are just the ones up on top. Let's let's take a look through them. I got some got some of these things. I got a, got some of these guys. I used one of those last week. I got little tiny ones. Is it a tiny one? There's a tiny one sneaking in back there. This is actually, the reason I went to the store was to find a glass like this, because I wanted a coupe glass, and it looks very, very pretty. Got some snifters and stuff like that, there's margarita glasses and whatnot on the back, and I even have a, um, a little, ooh, this thing. It's a, it's an absinthe spoon, which I've never used, because I have not used absinthe on the show in a, in the hottest of minutes. In any case, let's turn things back to the other side, if I can do so. There we go, that's exactly where it needs to be. A little bit of wobblage, and I'm going to unzoom myself. No, 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 no. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> I don't want to look at my back like that. Oh, either the one far right or the one far left front with a spherical ice cube in it. Either the one far right or the one far left front, the small one, or the one far right with this. Ooh, the snifter glass could be cool there. Technically speaking, I don't need ginger ale. That's the technique. Oh, yes, I do, actually. Technically speaking, according to Pregatini's, to create the hot mama. <laughs> Hot peppers not only spice up your love life as natural aphrodisiacs, they also rev up your metabolism. Why? You have a baby in this world now, hot mama. Think about that for a moment. Just make sure that baby don't see. But I guess they can't form memories until a couple months in or even a year in, so... Hmm, I don't know. Rev up my metabolism. Muddle the jalapeno sliced lime juice and bitters in the bottom of the mixing glass. Add orange juice and ice, then shake. Strain to a martini glass. It says martini glass. I don't have a small enough martini glass. We're going to use the snifter because we can. Top with gin diet ginger ale. I have regular ginger ale. I don't do diet in this house. Don't like the way it tastes. Garnish with the remaining jalapeno slices. I'm going to use chili flakes and put the remain float the remaining on the surface of the drink. So I'm going to get my shaker. I need my shaker. I have my shaker. Got my shaker. Yeah. I'm going to grab my snifter. I'm going to go with the small snifter. Tiny one. The tiny snifter. These are the ones that you're supposed to put whiskey and whatnot in to be able to smell at tastings and stuff. I've gone to tastings before for wine, not yet for whiskey. Although apparently I have a friend of mine who wants to go to a whiskey tasting. I'm looking forward to it. Let's put these ingredients aside until I finally have a use for them. Um, I'm going to continue drinking that one because it's nice. Mm. 
And we're gonna use another spherical ice cubes. That's just the thing for the night. Diet sodas taste just taste wrong. So actually, I, I've been around the block with diet stuff, and to me, I know it tastes bad because to me, it tastes a little bit like licorice because what they put in that stuff is aspartame, acesulfame, or sucralose, at least here in America for me. And those artificial sweeteners, to me, have a licorice-y taste. And to be perfectly fair, the taste of licorice has no place in my ginger ale, or my Coca-Cola, or my Pepsi. And so it does, it tastes odd. It tastes weird. I agree with that. It tastes off. I also agree with that. So let's do, let's do a cocktail recipe. I'm gonna use another one of my books to keep this thing open so I have my reference. Uh, all right, we gotta shake this thing up. So I'm gonna get a glass. I'm gonna do my ice cube, ice cube, ice cube in the glass, and then we'll do some smaller ice cubes, smaller ice cubes in the glass. What do we got? What do we got? Ice cube, ice cube, ice cube. I'm gonna do ice cube in the glass. I need lime juice too, right? Well, it's a good thing I dropped my limes over here. I'll throw that over there. We need to first add half an ounce of lime juice. Wow, lucky us! I have limes. I also have a cutting board. And my citrus juicer. Let's move some things around. Do a little bit of changing. I'm gonna need this for the juicage. I'm gonna use, woo! I'm gonna use this for the measurage. I gotta cut things. Let's get a lime. Oh, limey boy. I need half an ounce, AKA about 15 milliliters. I've been trying to memorize the conversions because I got friends who live across the pond. I got friends on the other side. And uh, and by the other side, I mean the other side of the Atlantic Ocean. Please don't fall, Brooke. Brooke, don't fall. No, 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 no. Don't fall. Don't do that. All right, that's, that's, that'll suffice. That will suffice. Okay, so now I got my lime. Probably should have done the squeezy trick first, but I'm still learning. Uh, let's see if I can squeeze half an ounce out of that. If I can, cool. If not, well, I guess we're taking the life of another one. Let's see. We've got about looks like a quarter of an ounce in there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, we're getting half an ounce out of this. For sure. For sure, for sure. Throw that down there. Don't need that. Got my little junk tray behind uh, below. And let's see if I can squeeze that last half ounce out of it. Yeah yeah. You know, this is very pleasant. Because when I get thirsty on my own, I can sip a drink of a cocktail we already made. Woo! It's great. I still like the way that tastes. I love that. That was with mead. I like mead. Mead's good. Mead's very good. Got half an ounce of lime juice. Let's put that into our shaker. Sweet. It's in there. We also need three drops of grapefruit bitters, which I completely forgot on the other side of the room because I'm winging it tonight. Excuse me. Excuse me while I get my grapefruit bitters. I've actually never found a use for grapefruit bitters. This is actually really cool. That's the, that's the thing. The reason why I like to go out and buy a bunch of ingredients and whatnot every once in a while and have all these cocktail books is because you never know when I might actually have something that is called for in one of these recipes. And it's really, really cool when it happens. It's really awesome. Okay, it says muddle. Oh, I need the jalapeno slices. Okay, so I forgot. We don't have the my jalapeno slice, so I need to add the ancho reyes in here. So literally, all I'm going to do, just to add... I gotta think. How much ancho reyes, which is this stuff, it's chili liqueur, ancho chili liqueur, it's a different type of pepper entirely, that how much would I want to put in there to mimic the spice of a jalapeno? I don't know. So I'm just going to do a dash, and if it doesn't seem like it's enough spice for me, I'll just add some more. Also, this is no longer a pregatini. This is alcoholic now. Please, if you were a mother or a nursing person, please, please do not drink alcohol. You may damage your children. Okay, that was way more than I needed. <laughs> We're gonna see how that tastes. I'm sure it's gonna taste just fine. Why would it taste bad? It's, I, I don't think I've ever had something that was truly awful on this show. Wait, no, I take that back. I've had things that are truly awful on this show. Um, yet your salsa, if anybody remembers that, I certainly do. Three drops of grapefruit bitters. And what that means is three dashes. And so I'm gonna dash it three times. Watch this. One, two, three. Epic. And I just got some on my arm. Ooh. It's grapefruit, all right, but more like more like somebody took the peel and just like vaporized it in your face. That's how I describe that. We also need three ounces of orange juice. Oddly enough, <laughs> I normally don't, but I've got fresh oranges. <laughs> I literally never have this. 
It's great, but uh, we decided to order some this time. I have a lot of glass on the table, and I'm about to make a total mess with all of my, um, with the cutting of these oranges. So actually, I'm going to move my glassware to the floor, do a little changing around, make sure I have space for all this, because if I don't have space, that's unfortunate. Um, this is a longer cocktail segment that I usually do, but honestly, I'm having it. That's the thing. I usually try to keep things short so we can get right into the game, but I'm having much more fun with my cocktail segment this time around, so that's where we're going to stay for a little bit. If you're into that stuff, nice! If not, eh, we'll get there eventually. I gotta put my line back because I didn't need to use the whole thing. All right, let's see. I don't, I need three full ounces of oranges. And I think, I don't remember what kind of oranges these are. Anna said they look more like giant lemons more so than oranges, which I agree with. They look very lemony to me. And I don't know, how do they smell? I don't know. They don't smell like anything right now because I haven't expressed any oils. But let's cut that in half. It was actually even easier to cut than the lime. All right, nice, nice. Oh, that is a very, ju ooh, that is a juicy orange. What does it taste like? It's a really sour orange. That kind of tastes like the white part of the orange, like the pith, combined with the juice. It's kind of interesting. It's not bad. I wouldn't say it's bad at all. Just different, different than what I'm used to. Oh, and I just noticed my, the, the, sh the part of my shaker that I put the liquid in is on the floor, which might be a good idea. Because if I did that, that'd be that'd be unfortunate for everybody involved. All right, let's juice an orange. It happens. So, how's everybody's day going? Have you juiced an orange recently? I haven't. It's been a hot minute. This is a very inconvenient apparatus, uh, the fact that I have to use my body. I really got to put my wrist into it. And, uh, my wrist has not been feeling very good recently. Uh, I do a lot of code work, do a lot of typing. I actually haven't done a lot of typing recently, but I think my fingers are just like recoiling from it all so it doesn't feel very good my mist is not happy i do not have an apparatus with which to make this easier for myself but man that's the remains of this orange it still smells like an orange i don't know why i thought it would be any different i don't know let's try to see how much i get from these two halves of oranges here it's interesting. Honestly, I usually don't have oranges in the apartment. I do have orange juice on the ready usually, which makes for a very eh tasting cocktail. I don't really like orange juice, like the prepackaged stuff. I really like the, like, I don't like the taste of processed orange juice. I like fresh orange juice. To me, they taste considerably different. To the others, I may probably just be crazy there, but one never knows. My preferences rule, because they're mine. Let's see if I got three ounces out of that. If I did, cool. And three ounces is going to be about 44. I think one ounce is, one ounce is 30. Am I doing this right? I gotta make sure I'm doing this right. Hey Google, are you listening? No, we turned the Google off. Oh, let's see, what is three, what is three ounces? Three ounces in milliliters. Just wanna make sure I'm doing that right. Three fluid ounces is equal to 88.7, 88. 88. about 89 milliliters, so about 90. Yeah, I, I was doing that conversion right. I gotta trust myself more. Jeez, so about three ounces. Or about, let's say, 89, 90 milliliters of orange juice. If you can do it fresh, cool. If not, that's fine. I have about, there's two ounces. And do I have a full one? I do not. Or do I? Actually, I gotta use the other side. It'll be easier that way. Full ounce? Do I got the full on ounce? Yeah. All right. It's a little bit, it's a little bit less, so I'll just kind of like, I'll take the other orange, the oranges that I had, and I'm just gonna like, kind of squeeze them a little bit more, see if I can get any more, oh yeah, that was exactly what I was hoping for, just get the little, the last bits of juice out of there, it's okay if I get seeds in there, I'll be straining this thing out anyway, nice, that's what I'm talking about, now that is a juiced orange, if I've ever seen it, it's literally, it's completely juiced, I don't think it can get any more juice than that. The next ingredient that we're going to put in here is two ounces of diet ginger ale. I do not have diet ginger ale. I just have regular ginger ale. And from the lack of a spritz, it is flat. But that's fine. I, I wasn't in it for the, for the flatness. I, I guess technically, well, it is flat. Yeah, it is flat. I guess I'm into flat. All right, that's just how it'll be. Two ounces or about 60 milliliters in here. This would have been a mocktail recipe. If you have it, it is not a mocktail this time around because I added liqueur to it. Liquor. I hardly know her. <laughs> That's not funny. I am going to shake this thing up. That's what I got to do next. I just got to shake it. 
Just gotta shake it, shake it, shake it till I just can't shake it no more. And then I guess garnish it. I got chili flakes for that. Let's do the shake. All right, let's do it. Um, what was in this again? I wanna shake it over here. It's not right in the microphone. All right. Sweetness. Okie dokie. We have it shaken. Now we need to put it in a glass. Which glass? Oh, thanks for reminding me. A snifter glass. Take a sniff out of this glass. It's still tasty. And let's give it a strain. I have my strainer from before. I prefer this strainer. Uh, it's not going to change things too much. I'll put this orange away. I don't need that orange anymore. I can close up shop down there. Don't need that. All right. And I know. Oh, oh, I need my spherical ice glue. Cute. The return of the sphere. Let's grab another one. There you are. There it is. There it is. Uh, where's my spoon? So I can knock off the imperfections. We yearn for perfection around here. If you are not perfection, we don't want you. For the ice cubes, I mean. If you are not perfect, because I am not perfect, I still want you here. You are just as precious as any perfect ice cube. If not, more precious, because you're the diamond that nobody's looking for. Never knew that they needed. Spherical ice cube. Snifter glass. Actually, I like that. <laughs> I'm going to probably make it a little more round if I keep doing it around the glass. That is so fun to do. I wonder, can I... This might be stupid. I'm going to see if I can spin it fast enough to, like... Actually, that's going to break the glass. I'm not going to do that. I'm getting more and more nervous just thinking about it. All right, let's do that. This was Hot Mama Made Alcoholic. Yo, I'm going to head back now. Oh, how's this going? It's great. We're on cocktail number two. I'm having a good time. This is Hot Mama with a slight modification. It's approximately 52 calories, as I've just learned. It's supposed to be served in martini glass. It's not. And I'm adding alcohol to it because I don't have jalapeno slices. Let's do it. Let's strain that out. I don't have my yoga blocks, so this is what we're getting. All right. Not too bad. Yo, it's really, it's like right up at the top there. Beautiful looking. I love the way that looks. Let me put that down. Don't spill. Put this away. Put that down here. All righty then. Okie dokie. And then we need to garnish it. And the way that I'm going to garnish it is I'm going to take, where did I put the chili flakes? There you are. I'm going to put a couple of red chili flakes on top of it. Just, just a little. <laughs> Watch, I'm gonna taste this drink. I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna put it in my mouth and I'm gonna get one of these stuck in my throat and I'm gonna start choking, which is why I have water. This, I present to thee, Hot Mama Modified. If you can see the red chili flakes, you are you have more blessed eyes than the, my camera does. I'm gonna take the obligatory Instagram picture. I have to. I have to. It's, it's nice. I like it. It's like, it's got a nice orange tone to it. Things are yeah, out of the way. Get out of the way. Take a picture of this. Yes. Why won't you focus, you stupid device? I am telling you to focus on what you need to focus on, and you are not listening to me. Oh, dear. I think my microphone just moved. My microphone is very haphazardly placed on the side of my desk, so if this falls, I'm going to have to fix it. <laughs> and it looks like it might. Oh, my God. It just kind of... Anyway. We'll have to figure it out. I don't have a long-term solution for that yet. Anyway, might as well quick this... Drink this quick... Uh, <laughs> drink this... Drink fast so that I can properly give my thoughts on it before my microphone comes toppling through the ground. This was Hot Mama. It's got a bunch of shit in it. Look for the uh, look for the recipe on Discord, Instagram, literally wherever these things happen. I post them literally everywhere. If you haven't found them yet, I'm trying to make it easy for you. How, how haven't you not found these? Anyway. Ah, it's good. It's not bad at all. It tastes like, it tastes like orange juice. With a slight twang to it, the twang, the sw the sourness is that, like, the lime. I can taste the lime. It tastes like orange and lime juice, but it's also got a spice to it. And I didn't put a lot of ancho reyes in here, not a lot of it, but I'm sure, I feel like if you actually muddled up a jalapeno the way that the instructions told you to, it would probably have more of that spice that it's attempting to look for. It's not that bad. I think it's very pleasant. It's mostly orange juicy. I'm not a big orange juice person. Not from these oranges. I don't know what kind of oranges they are, but we just got them recently from a from a... A shipment, I think. We got groceries shipped to us. It's alright. Yeah, other than that, very plain. What else was in there? Oh, it was in the, the ginger ale, too. I'm kind of losing the ginger ale. I get it. It's there. At least the Canada Dry ginger ale. But, like, it's not very prominent. It's not very... 
in your face. It just kind of adds, I think what it does is it balances out the sourness from the orange and the lime to make it a little more sweet, or it, it's still kind of sour. It's still sour to my palate, so it didn't balance out the sweetness entirely. So, but that's what I got. That was my cocktail show. That was our cocktail show. That's not just mine. If anybody else, get, if you gain anything from this, awesome. That's great. Come back next time. We'll always have more. It happens on Wednesdays because that's what I like to do on my Wednesdays. It's actually quite nice that like I kind of had this schedule set up to be able to just like explore my hobby, explore my passion on specific days of the week. It's nice. And people gen people genuinely respect that. It's nice. When I say I'm busy on a Wednesday and they say, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, I'm live streaming. They're like, all right. Not like, loser. No, he reacts like that. Although to some, I may be a loser, but you know what? Sometimes it's not always about winning. Sometimes it's about losing in your way, which is actually winning. We need two cocktails tonight. One is what we're calling the twig cocktail because it uses twig mead from Vermont. Uh, golden rum, I believe. Golden rum thing? Oh, I have the bottle. Where's the bottle at? It's this guy. I got it from Vermont when I visited my brother. It's great. Golden rum, golden rule mead, which they call on the back twig which is great. And you just mix that with a little bit of dark rum and it's great. It's lovely. It's woodsy. Woodsy and a little bit of mint there, which has kind of subsided now that it's kind of watered down a little bit. And then Hot Mama, modified, not a pregatini anymore, AKA a mocktail. Although I'm going to provide the, I'll call it a mocktail for the purposes of this, because it should have been a mocktail, but it isn't in this case. But you know, you'll get both recipes the way that I did it and the way that the book did it, because it's up to you. Choice is in your ballpark. I pass the buck to you. And that's all we had today, folks. Thank you so much for coming along at the bar. It was fun. It was exciting. I'm glad that I was able to do two drinks this time around. I guess we kind of went a little over, but really, who's counting the time? It's it's my time. I can do whatever I want with it. So it was great. I would say if I had to pick a favorite between the two, I actually like the twig cocktail more so than the hot mama because I think there's got there's a lot more going on in here. To be fair, I think it's because. The rum that I use has a lot of layers to it, and the mead that I just used apparently also has a lot of layers to it. So those layers kind of intermingle with each other, evolve over time, and give you a drink that isn't just the same when you start drinking it than it is at the end. I found so far with my mocktail experiences, and that's yet to be said about the Hot Mama, that usually there's not much of an evolution there, at least with like basic ingredients, like, like different juices that you find in your fridge. It's just kind of, it tastes the same as it did in the beginning, as it did at the end, except it's a little more watered down. Whereas drinks like this, apparently, kind of what you get out of the drink is different as the ice melts, as it gets a little bit warmer. And like, I, I can't say that I know too much about that or know the science behind it, but like, it enthuses me and it intrigues me that there is a, there's a way to experience that via my taste buds in the world around me, which I, I learn more and more about what enthuses me about cocktails every single day. And that's so, so the same should be said about all of our hobbies. So if you've got hobbies to get back to, go for it. I'm going to be continuing things on the other side. I'm playing some Hollow Knight tonight. More platforming action. We'll be back next week with another wonderful episode of The Bar with an X. It's that thing. That's what it is. Thank you all very much for coming along. I'll see you on the other side. If not, have a great evening. If it's the evening where you are. If it's a morning where you are, have a wonderful morning. I'm sure it's going to be a peaceful one. And if not, that's okay. The even You never know what the evening or afternoon may find you. And if that's where it is, if it's the afternoon, 12 o'clock somewhere, 5 o'clock, have a good one, no matter what time it is. Party on, y'all. Bye! Uh, there looks to be something over there, but it doesn't look like I can get there yet. This bridge looks like it's gonna fall. Oh. Now, what's this button do? I'm a detective. It looks like a robot. I'll inspect it. Oh! I broke it.